Welcome back. Let's immediately take you now to Laikipia County where Governor Nderito Muredi is naming nominees for the position of chief officers within the county. He's also expected to give an account on 1.3 billion Kenya shillings that was not accounted for during the previous regime. Let's listen in. Applications were looked at by the Public Service Board who shortlisted 133 persons. Um, generally, um, and, and I think it is testimony that the county, as an employer, continues to attract top talent, and it is our intention to develop and nurture that talent um, so that we build the very best county uh, with the best quality of life. So 133 persons uh, were shortlisted by the Public Service Board and interviewed. Uh, these interviews took nearly two weeks uh, of 10 to 12 hours of work to complete. Uh, the board in turn uh, then forwarded to me a shorter list or pool, if you like, uh, of 42 or so individuals or professionals uh, whom my colleague John and I, um, as well as uh, the CECs uh, interviewed. And I want to emphasize the point about the CECs interviewing the chief officers because we found a tradition or a culture that did not recognize the CEC as the head of the department that they lead. And we want to be very clear on the get-go that chief officers are responsible to the CECs and the CECs in turn are responsible to us for the performance of their departments. Um, we also want to emphasize here that as a government, together with the public service the board, we are determined to build a professional, competent public service that is able to deliver, uh, not just now, to the future and into the future. And we know that any organization is only as good as the people that lead it and are serving it. And therefore, uh, you will have noticed uh, this January 15th, uh, the requirement that you complete um, the performance appraisal process. And that performance appraisal process uh, yielded a number of issues. First, um, it yielded the fact that there are some staff who did not even know which departments they belonged to and who their supervisors were and therefore we um, will use that process of performance management to ensure that uh, this organization that is like keep your county uh, that is like keep your county government is a high performing organization So later today, we shall be transmitting um, our, the names of our nominees to the county assembly so that then the assembly can in turn uh, perform its role of public uh, vetting of um, these um, nominees. There are also a, number of, a couple of other points that uh, we want to, not points, but a, a couple of other areas. Uh, you will recall that uh, the complement of CECs um, is not full, and therefore we continue with our efforts uh, to um, identify uh, leaders who will be part of the county executive committee. In addition, um, in the leadership of the public service itself, um, we are yet to substantially fill the position of county secretary and deputy county secretary uh, and we'll be making announcements to that effect. Um, also, in the board itself, we have an outstanding um, member of public service board um, position to fill and we'll be making a nomination to that as well. And also, some key initiatives 
um, that are in my office. <coughs> and I welcome the members of the county assembly uh, that are here with us to begin my coffee to Fadali. So without further ado, let me start uh, by announcing further nominees to the county executive committee. And first, CC for health. Mr. James T. Madenge. Now, Mr. Madenge is a seasoned professional and leader with continental experience both um, in East and Central Africa. And you know him, he's no stranger to you. And uh, he has led key functions in finance, in innovation, in strategic and strategic programs at World Vision and elsewhere. Mr. Madenge is a holder of a Bachelor of Commerce from the University of Nairobi, as well as a Master's in Arts in Organizational Leadership and Development from the Eastern University College in Pennsylvania in the US. And Mr. Madenge is also a CPA part two. And if, oh, Tafadali, could you uh, welcome Mr. Madenge uh, to sit? Secondly, nominee CEC member for County Administration and Human Capital. And you will notice we are talking about human capital because we believe, Karibu Sana Mweshwa, we believe that the persons or individuals who serve in this organization are critical to its service delivery and the kinds of performance management systems that we are instituting are the very modern and that is why we refer to it as human capital. So county administration and human capital, Madam Mombi Mwago. Mombi is serving on the Adi Water Services Board and has led key programs at AMREF and at the University of Nairobi, where she has also taught. Uh, she has consulted widely for UNICEF, the DFID, and USID, and has been project manager for the UNTID Fellowship Program. She holds a BA in Sociology, a Master's in Project Management, and is about to complete uh, her doctoral work. Karibu sana, Mumbi. Tumbigia makofi tafadhali. We shall be making further uh, nominations uh, for member of the County Executive Committee. Within the public service or the leadership of the public service itself, County Secretary, Mr. Karanja Jora. Now, I'm sure you know this man. Uh, Mr. Karanja is a county commissioner. Uh, he's on secondment by the national government to us, and he's currently the chief of staff. And Mr. Karanja is, holds a BA in economics, a diploma, as well as master's in arts, or uh, master of arts in public administration and management. He's a seasoned administrator and has worked in many counties uh, in this uh, country of ours. Karibu sana, Mr. Karanja. Mpigiani makofi tafadhali. Karibu. To deputize Mr. Karanja, in the position of Deputy County Secretary, Mr. Amos Punden. Mr. Punden is working on a PhD in Human Capital Development. He has an MBA in Human Resource Management and a Bachelor of Arts degree in Integrated Community Development, Peace and Conflict Resolution. Mr. Punden has been working as a Community Safety Facilitator with the Danish Refugee Council. <coughs> Excuse me. The Danish Refugee Council. Please welcome Mr. Amos Punden. Sandy Sana. Completing this area of um, the public service, 
with our nomination to member for the Public Service Board. Our nominee has a BSc in Agriculture from the University of Nairobi and a Master's of Arts in Peace and Justice from the University of San Diego in the US. He has been an international individual consultant for the UNDP and has worked for the Danish community peace building and development as a project coordinator <coughs> for eight years. He has also served as deputy director in the NCC, NCCK's development unit for three years and before that worked as a migratory pest control officer as well as crops and pests control with the Ministry of Agriculture. I'm of course talking about Pita Mumo Ga Guru. Is he? Oh, I see. He is, <laughs> he is sitting in the wrong tent. Karibu sana. Uh, welcome on this side. Tumpigie Peter Makofi tafadhali. Situeke bidi. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now on to the nominees uh, for chief officers. Health, Dr. Donald Mugoi. Dr. Mugoi is uh, our senior most uh, health sector manager. Tafadhali, Dr. Mama, let me introduce you. If you stand here next to me. Dr. Mugoi is uh, um, our senior most health sector manager, albeit in an acting capacity. Um, and uh, he has demonstrated over his career advanced clinical and managerial skills and is currently leading our universal healthcare efforts, among other things. You will notice, ladies and gentlemen, that this effectively is an internal promotion underlying our commitment to build a professional public service. Karibu sana, Dr. Mugoi. Yes, we, after here we are, we are rushing off to Matanya to recruit people into the NHIF program. Next up, Housing and Urban Development, Mr. Kenneth Karanja. Mr. Karanja is, a, is currently our County Physical Planning Officer. He has previously worked with the County Government of Taita Taveta as a County Physical Planning Officer, Google Kenya as a GIS Consultant, and the Municipal Council of Ruiru as an Urban Planner. This is also an internal promotion. Mr. Karanja. Third, CEC nominee for Sports, Youth and Culture, Mr. James Mwangi Amaukipenda Woodboy. <laughs> Mr. Mwangi is a young, respected leader, although he has some gray hair, he may confuse you. He is a member um, of the youth board in uh, Nairobi City uh, County. He is a well-known sports coordinator and events organizer and by profession, he's a graphics designer. Karibu sana, Mweshmua Woodboy. Sign sana. Education. Miss Isiri Fatuma Aden. Fatuma is a teacher service commission sub-county director in Baringo. She has previously worked as a TSE staffing officer in Laikipia North, as well as an educator in many parts of this country. Karibu sana, Fatuma. Human Capital. Sarah Wanjera Gishamba. Sarah also joins us from Nairobi County, uh, City County, where she is an administrator. She has previously worked with the Ministry of National Coordination and Interior as a district officer and also as an assistant uh, county commissioner 
in many parts of this country, in Meru, in Kitui, in Mwingi. Prior to that, she was a business development officer with One Africa Microfinance Limited, as well as a microcredit officer with Equity Bank. Karibu sana, Sarah Gishamba. Makofi kwa ketofalabi. County Administration, Mr. Wallace Nerito Karioki. Mr. Wallace joins us from Equity Bank in Akuru, where he is a relationship officer in the Department of Credit. He has previously worked with the Parliamentary Service Commission as a constituency manager as well as a legislative assistant. Karibu sana Wallace. Agriculture, Mr. Joseph Millionaire Lentunyoi. <laughs> Mr. Lentunyoi is, holds a Bachelor of Science in Organic Agriculture and is a trainer and advisor at the Permiculture Research Institute. Mr. Lentunyoi is credited with finding economic uses for Puntia, that invasive cactus that is in the northern Highlands, uh, Range Runs. Karibu sana, Mr. Lentunyoi. Asante. Asante. Trade, Cooperatives and Enterprise Development. Mr. Jesse Mugo Bodhi. Mr. Bode holds a, bachelor of, uh, a bachelor's in education from Kenyatta University and a diploma in marketing and advertising as well as public relations and is a CPA. He joins us from Cooperative Bank where he's a branch manager. Karibu sana, Mr. Bode. Sani sana. Tunaendelea vizuri. Tourism. Tourism, I think in absentia. Tourism, uh, Ms. Beatrice Namu, eh? Namunyak Rempaira. Uh, Beatrice has a very deep understanding on our tourism offer as Lakipia, having worked as Economic Empowerment Assistant Director at the Northern Range Runs Trading Company. She has also worked as Conservancy Manager for Naibuga Conservancy, as Indigenous Leaders Conservation Fellow with Conservation International, as a Research Assistant at Desert Edge, and has worked on data analysis and collection with the Africa Wildlife Foundation and the, Africa, and the Laikipia Wildlife Forum, Tumbigia Makofi, um, in absentia. Also in absentia, uh, for finance and planning, Yunis Wangari Gatia. Yunis is a regional finance manager with the Kenya Rural Roads Authority, Kera. And prior to that, she worked uh, for eight years as an, uh, as an accountant in the private sector. She holds a Bachelor of Commerce, a Master's, uh, or an MBA in Strategic Management. And is a CPA to begin my coffee. <laughs> Environment and Natural Resources, Dr. Jennifer Kinoti. Dr. Kinoti is a renowned scientist and brings deep technical and managerial knowledge to the management of natural resources and basic and basin protection. And she has worked at Central uh, both here in Yanyuki as well as on the continent, Karibu Sana Daktari. Karibu. Well, we interrupt uh, that address there by Laikipia Governor Nderito Muridi. He's taken time to talk about the process by which 133 individuals within the county were shortlisted by the Public Service Board and taken through interviews. He has named two CCs, a county secretary and a deputy. Uh, remember, initially he had named eight uh, CC nominees. Three were rejected during vetting. He has named two, uh, and he says he will advise on other nominations uh, in subsequent days. He was now going through the names of chief officers.
uh, who basically will be a sort of like PSs at the county level overseeing operations uh, within the counties as well. Well, we'll take you back there shortly, but for now, let's take you to Uhuru Park, where concerned Kenyans, human rights activists, defenders, and media practitioners uh, have gathered uh, to talk about various issues and to protest about matters like the state of democracy in the country, human rights violations, attack on media, and what they are terming as outright disregard for the rule of law as stipulated in the Constitution. Let's take a look at what's going on there. Even as Makori Ongechi, our reporter on the ground, uh, let us know a little bit about how this protest is developing. Makori, what can you tell us? Well, a uh, very good morning to you, Wahiga. Yes, we are coming live to you from uh, Uhuru Park, uh, where, like you have said, there is a group of members of uh, various uh, particular activist groups that are assembling or gathering up in uh, a planning to uh, uh, demonstrate over what they say is, um, uh, or they have a number of issues that they want to address or demonstrate against. Wahiga, uh, key of uh, the agendas that uh, this particular group is uh, demonstrating against is the media shutdown, where they are saying that uh, the government has gone too way far in uh, probably uh, doing which that which is against the, the constitution of Kenya. And now I want to talk to one of the members of these groups uh, to briefly tell us what exactly is happening. Gentlemen, uh, could you kindly tell us what you are planning to do or achieve uh, in the course of the day? Today, uh, a consortium of uh, human rights organizations gather here at Freedom Corner and we want to march uh, through the city of Nairobi. And then the message we are taking forward uh, uh, basically is that the, gov the government of Kenya or the Jubilee government uh, is considering law as a nuisance and they are not following any law as we know it today. Uh, we have examples of uh, the, the, the government not giving the citizens the freedom that the citizens need to have, uh, the, the, even the, 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 free, the freedom to gather, the freedom to, to, of speech is not there today in this, in this country. You will find that uh, the government even disobeys court orders. As much as they push Kenyans to obey the law, the government itself does not obey court orders. Uh, there are court orders that have been uh, hanging for over one year, uh, like the one for the, the, the PS uh, in interior. It's been hanging there for one year. There are court orders where the government has been asked to implement the, 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 the act of, uh, the, I, I mean, the Public, public Benefits Organizations Act. The government has, has refused to implement this act. The government, uh, currently there are people who are um, in custody, uh, like Miguna Miguna. The court has, uh, has uh, given an order for him to be released. The government has refused. There are several things that the government has refused. Even the implementation of the two-thirds gender rule, uh, there is a court order on it. The government has refused. The president has refused even to obey the two-thirds gender rule in uh, appointing his cabinet the other day. So uh, what we are seeing is that the Jubilee government uh, does not obey uh, respect the law. And they are, they are, they are, they are, even the law on information, the freedom or the right of the people to have to get information, they are infringing on it. Right now, they have switched off uh, uh, three TV, uh, TVs in this country. Uh, the citizens cannot uh, get information. And uh, even uh, a court order is there that this TV station should be switched on, but the government has refused to switch them on. So what is your plan for the day? Probably where do you want to march to? Do you have any petition that probably you want to present to someone? We are not presenting a petition, and because uh, if they are not obeying the law, I, I, I'm not sure if they will want to obey a petition or to listen to what we are putting in a petition, because the things we would have tell them in a petition are things that they know and they are refusing to do. So ours is to mobilize Kenyans and to inform Kenyans of what is going on in this country and to prepare Kenyans that we are, they are, we are going, going towards a hard, hard times and Kenyans may need or should come out and defend this space. So we are, we, are, we, are, we are pushing on to defend our space, our rights as, as Kenyans to, 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 to have freedom of, of speech, to have freedom of receiving information, to have uh, to, to, for obedience of law. So all these things we are pushing together. Yes, welcome. Well, uh, Waika, those are some of the issues that uh, this particular group or members of various activist groups and the Kenya human rights uh, groups that are gathering up or trying to really march and uh, probably uh, demonstrate against uh, what is happening. Uh, Wahika. Thank you, Makori Ongechi, for that update and just for letting our viewers know what is happening at Uhuru Park as that consortium of uh, civil rights uh, groups meet to protest. They are at the Freedom uh, Corner and uh, there are various issues, uh, freedom of the media, 
um, uh, and of course, uh, uh, you know, the, the government should obey the court orders as well as some of the issues that have made them congregate at that point at this moment. Well, we can now take you back to Laikipia County, where Governor Derito Moreithi continues to name uh, chief officers and to walk the county through uh, uh, what his administration will look like moving forward. Yes, let me start uh, with uh, Annette Wamboi, who has been holding like five jobs at a time. Director of Cabinet, um, as well as acting in education, ICT, and culture, and sports. That's like five or six. Tumpigia ni makofi. So that which uh, a man can do, a woman can do times four. Tumpigia ni makofi. In the middle there, I see uh, Mr. Utieno Jamba. Tumpigia ni makofi. And uh, we are together in my department. I see next to him, Mr. Jenga Oero Mpigiani Makofi. Next to him, Mr. Maina in uh, Water Mpigiani Makofi. Nani mungene sijasema? Ah, Dr. Thuo. Patafadali, Dr. Thuo, leading agriculture and livestock and fisheries at the back. Um, Jemaima. Did I see Jemaima? Yes, Mpigiani Makofi, Tafadali. Now these officers, in addition to their normal responsibilities, have taken on the responsibility uh, of leadership and they have done us proud. And I'm quite certain um, they have picked up valuable uh, lessons um, that will be um, uh, an addition to the growth of their career. Asandani Sana, it's not uh, uh, normally that we should accept questions uh, from these uh, members of the fourth estate, but if there are any, we will. Thank you, Asante Sana, God bless. Um, I'll give you a statement when we are finished with the ceremony on the questions he's asking. Asante Sana, I think there are some refreshments served and uh, I would like you to interact with these officers um, and leaders so that uh, we move all together. Sandani Sana, God bless. All right, so that's the end of that uh, press briefing there in Laikipia County. Let's now give you some updates now from the courts. First things first, uh, the High Court has ordered police to produce uh, Miguna Miguna, the self-declared general of the National Resistance Movement, by 2 p.m. today. Uh, the High Court judge here, we're talking about Luka Kimaru, ordered the Inspector General and the DCI to produce him in about uh, four hours or so at the court. In addition, uh, regarding the matter of media shutdown, lawyer Gibson Kamau Kuria for the Royal Media Services will not file contempt of court proceedings. Instead, he says that he will write a letter to the Chief Justice to complain about the whole issue of government not obeying court orders. So that's a little bit about what is happening in the courts, uh, both in regards to Miguna Miguna's uh, um, being held up uh, in, you know, by the authorities over the weekend and the media shutdown as well. Let's now tell you a little bit about what is happening on the international front. We start in South Africa, where South Africa's President Jacob Zuma is under growing pressure to step down following talks with senior members of his ANC party yesterday. Details of the talks were not revealed, but party leaders are to hold an emergency meeting today. The six most senior figures of the governing ANC party arrived one by one yesterday at his residence in Pretoria. Zuma, who faces corruption allegations, was replaced as ANC leader by Cyril Ramaphosa in December. And Ali say party chiefs want to avoid a power struggle that could split the ANC before elections next year. They're expected to begin the process to remove President Zuma through a formal recall or by introducing a motion in parliament. Meanwhile, from Thursday, residents in uh, South Africa's largest uh, city, Cape Town, were ordered not to exceed 50 liters of water per person per day 
as officials worried that taps could run by mid-April or could run dry by mid-April. That's And we're talking about Thursday, the 1st of February last week. Hotels in this popular tourist spot have asked guests not to use baths and take short showers, while some residents are switching to disposable cups and ditching table linen to reduce the need for washing. They join a citywide effort to save water and delay day zero when water can no longer be drawn from dams supplying the city. Recent data from the country's uh, Department of Water Affairs showed water levels in dams have decreased to 25.3 from 26.6%. To extend this deadline, the city is scrambling for contingency plans. Some residents have now been forced to stand in long queues to fill up water bottles, while others have opted to build homemade water rationing systems. According to the United Nations, water scarcity already affects more than 40% of the world's population and is expected to rise. While well, Italy's police released videos yesterday relating to the arrest of an Italian man who is suspected of having opened fire on African migrants in the central city of Maserata uh, on Saturday in an attack that injured six people before his detention in what police said was a racially motivated attack. The video showed the suspect's bedroom in the apartment where he was living with his mother with belongings that included a copy of Mein Krampf by Adolf Hitler and a large knife. The shootings happened just days after a Nigerian migrant was arrested in connection with the death of an 18-year-old Italian woman whose dismembered body was discovered stuffed into two suitcases near Maserata. Police have named the suspected assailant as Luca Traini, who is 28 years old, and said he had an Italian flag draped over his shoulders when he was seized in the streets by armed police. Meanwhile, it is carnival season in parts of the world from Haiti to Rio de Janeiro. I'm talking about music, dance, song and culture will be on display over the next couple of days. In Haiti, the country's national carnival is returning to the capital, Port-au-Prince, from the 11th to the 13th of February. This year's celebration is being held under the theme Haiti on the Road to Change. Meanwhile, in Brazil, drummers, dancers and revelers filled the Sambodromo, that's in Rio de Janeiro yesterday, for technical rehearsals for the city's famous carnival parade. Dancers from the various samba schools danced energetically to the beat of the group's samba dramas with one week to go before the start of the carnival. Well, these are problems you'll probably not see in Africa anytime soon. Dexter, we're talking about that peacock in front of you. An emotional support peacock was denied boarding entry by United Airlines on Saturday to the dismay of the owner and amusement of passers-by in New Jersey. A video shows the animal casually perched on the owner's shoulder as she walks into the Newark Liberty International Airport. Other photographs showed Dexter in different positions at the airport. According to media reports, United stopped this animal from boarding the aeroplane, claiming it did not meet the size and weight standards, among other reasons. Now, these are emotional support animals. They typically include dogs and cats and are used by people who are said to have some sort of disability, which generally needs to be verifiable. So the owner had to take that journey by road, because the airline would not allow this peacock on board. All right, let's immediately take you now to Meru County, where the county government is launching a free milk program. It had promised to ECD early childhood development pupils during campaigns. They want to fulfill that promise. Uh, let's listen to the finer details around that. Uh, we work sometimes a bit slow. When we came in, uh, immediately we had to... We had to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> and again, <laughs> 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 uh, 
we had of course to do our budget, the supplementary budget, so that we could align uh, the budget with our programs. Um, and this is really one of our key promises, and we are happy that we've been able to, to you know, uh, be able to That's pass through all that. Uh, so um, we are here today to launch the school milk program. And I must uh, you know, say we feel sorry that the governor is not, is not around. Apologies from me, but uh, CEO and chairman. We are really wish to be here, but unfortunately he's traveling out of the country today. There is a UN uh, Cities Conference in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And I think we have here. And we have to say, dear men. Uh, one of the things I, I, I really want to do is to commend uh, the chairman and the board members and the, really Wanagitonga, the rest of the team. Because I'm sure you did not do this alone. You work with your team. We, our prayer as a government was that we wanted a strong company to win this tender for supply of milk. And we are indeed happy that uh, we won the tender. Because at this end have been won by if somebody who does not have a capacity uh, to distribute the uh, massive of all the primary schools in Meru County is not a joke. And uh, many primary schools. So we are happy that uh, Meru Dairy, who have the capacity and the ability, won the tender. For your information, and I've just been informed by the CEO, that this is the only factory, uh, milk processing factory in the eastern province. It's the biggest in the province. Isn't it? No, the only one. The only one, actually. And uh, it has capacity to process, it tells me 300,000 liters per day, with capacity that it, they, they, they intend to expand to 500,000 500, liters per day. So, now in fact, the Google, to begin a coach. In the case of the defender, we miss our Kulima Wet. The Sasa Pasau to Mianza Umoran was who broke program. That, of course, means he factory in Taitaji Mazua Mingi Saidi. Because currently they are getting about 200,000 meters. So you see, that is still below their production capacity. So we depend on the MISA, Wakulima Wet, Wangome, Tafadari. Because that is a traditional market, Wai factory. To be able to live in Wangome. As I was uh, having a chat with the CEO, I mean, I'm here to come to the farm to talk to the Gigan and Igembe. I think we only get like uh, less than 2,000 meters. A day, and you have had the capacity is 220,000. So, now, we even depend on the same as the to Amaji, Apa, and Michigan. And we have a Karibuni, and I end up with Chibia Watu March. We depend on the Misa of Limawe to watch. When you come here, you can have a Mombenini, and I can have a very big Hapa, in the factory, buy in a Peleka Masu and Paka Nairobi, in a Zem Zot as a Kenya. We have a Tadari. So then that way, we are going to create more jobs for our youth, we are going to create more opportunities, and of course our economy will come to the mm -hmm. uh, So, Mimi, Staki Kongea Sana, Mikushukuru Nini, Na Kusema Ya Kwamba, Tutaenda Kushirikiana, we are just beginning this program, we will be giving milk twice a, a, week, a, a week, Thursdays, Na Tuesdays and Thursdays. But uh, this is really pilot. Uh, you know, as we move on, we shall commit more resources. <coughs> our desire, our goal is to make sure that we give this milk five times per week. Maratano for which that is really our intention. So we want to want to return to the chairman level of the Kenya Masiwamini. See you in Congress at Pesa Kumkulima. That way. Shire, <laughs> I'm happy to be the deputy governor and also minister for finance. So I have authority to give you that assurance. <laughs> I don't have to consult anybody. <laughs>
Well, students of Meru County, good news. Uh, Meru Dairy will be providing milk to all the uh, students there as part of a campaign promised by the county government. Um, and uh, that is a bit about what was being announced there in that particular function. You're watching Citizen Extra. We take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking matters cancer. Yesterday was World Cancer Day. Uh, where are we as a nation in terms of tackling uh, cancer? Uh, what are some of the things you need to know as an individual, both uh, in terms of prevention and, of course, if you have uh, been diagnosed with cancer, uh, how do you live with it? Uh, those are some of the discussions we'll be having shortly. We'll be right back.